We're at the greenhouse of Dr. Yian Evans of Evans Cherry fame, just west of the University of Alberta Botanic Gardens, and we're going to show you the fourth type of grafting, which is chip budding, and it's usually done in the spring. It's a very effective way to propagate plants and make a lot of trees. So Dr. Evans, take it away. Yeah, this is a hot day in June now, but I collect the budwood in December or January, and I take the top, the, the young growth budwood, obviously in, in the winter, no leaves, and put it in the, in the refrigerator, not the freezer, the, the, at minus 11, with some ice and or snow. I have my budwood stock sitting there ready. I, I usually plant my, my stocks in, in the fall and bring them into the greenhouse, but you can leave them outside and, and plant them in September and then bring them in early in the spring, as early as possible, say, into a greenhouse or a building. Or if you have no greenhouse, you can do it outside. But I graft for the Alberta climate, not the Ontario or BC climate. Grafting in, in, in Alberta should be done at the base of the plant because we get so much winter kill and damage, we graft very low down. And what I use for the chip budding is this parafilm, and it's available at uh, most uh, medical outlets. It's, it's a, a waxy sort of plastic. There's the parafilm itself. And you see, you take a bud. Uh, now, this is not, the bud is not uh, fully formed here yet. It's still early in the year. It's still June. But you take that bud, you cut it out like so, like a little horseshoe there. You see, there's the bud. There's the little bud there. And then you make a pocket. See, I've done this there. I've cut this out and made a pocket. You graft up low down, way down. And that little bud sits in there like that. And you think, oh, okay, how do I hold it in? Well, this parafilm, this is very flexible and it's the best stuff. It's expensive to a big roll, but it's a lifetime type roll. And then you take this parafilm and in this weather, it's very soft and flexible and you can wrap it around and you seal the bud in. Now, you see, in this province, well, it's the same for BC and Ontario now. We don't grow apple trees or pear trees or plum trees. You grow apple bushes, plum bushes, pear bushes. Who wants this 15 foot, 20 foot tree? You want something that's five, six, eight foot tall that you can uh, get in after and uh, pick the apples off or the plums off. This fixation with trees is a European dream. And even in BC now, if you notice on the hills there, the apple trees are only eight to 10 foot tall. Now to get this thing ready, I will cut this off here, this growth. I will leave some of the growth to take place here. And I can put many buds on this. I can take this here now, do the same thing there, see here, and clip that out. And I can take another bud from here. This is springtime, don't forget. And take that little bud out and I can take this and put it in here. And again, you know, another piece of parafilm. Technically, I can graft two or three or four buds on this one little stem. Maybe all of them won't come up, but with uh, this method, with pears, uh, I get about a 99 I can say 99, 98% success perhaps. The only reason I don't get success is maybe the pear stock wood is dead. With plums, I get about a 90% success, and with apples, about an 80% success. And now I leave that there, and those buds will take off, and you can pass me those, uh, Bernie. This is where I did that previously. See, I put in two apples, and they'll also self-pollinate now, each other. Apples have a tendency to self-pollinate if they're different kinds. And in this one, I've got... Uh, uh, what I call Alberta Red and Alberta Buff. These are two apples rescued from the, um, uh, the uh, Alberta Research Program in the 60s. These are far better than the ones you buy in the stores. You buy, you know, Fall Red and uh, September Ruby. Nobody grows those apples except they're sold from BC to local owners here. These are the good apples, so to speak, and there's two lots in here. I have four in this one. 
And then when I plant these trees, there's a cruzulia pear, by the way. We do the exact same thing on pears. There is the bud that Dr. Evans grafted in the spring. This is the growth that you tend to get. And here is the pollinator that he left on here. Yeah, that's part of the original tree. Now, you, you can leave the pollinator. You can leave some shoots. If, on the apple, you can as well. Leave a shoot. You don't have to get rid of everything. That's the pollinator. That will pollinate this pear tree because it's different genetically from this. This is a Siberian pear root stock in this particular case with a Crisulia pear. Yeah, a wonderful pear. Chip and on. then when I plant these things, guess what? This is how I plant them in the garden. You see, look at that. Oh, isn't that ridiculous? No, the pot is there. You put it over the, uh, over the pear tree. And, and the point is, the, you know, the, I take this out of the pot, obviously. And, and I put it a little deeper, actually, so that uh, the graft is about two or three inches below the soil. And this little shoot is showing just above. This protects you against mice, voles. When voles come along in the spring, they run around here. They run under the snow and they can't get in. So your pots are put to good use. Plus you can fill this with peat moss and insulation. And if you get one hell of a hard winter and this dies back, it fires back from the base again. I have trees out in the orchard that come back three times. Like there's one called Sweet 16 and it's a Minnesota apple, as good as Honeycrisp, maybe even better. It's been hammered about three times, but it's now in its twenties. And last year it produced 200 pounds of apples because it comes from the base all the time. It's now, it's now uh, massive shoots from the base that periodically in some of the cold springs and winters get hammered back.